Um, yeah, one more thing I wanted to um, add. This is as a, I would say, a side remark. Um, so this, this is also not related to the guideline to a good mesh because if you combine the use of symmetry, even in this case, you should still follow um, these rules for a good mesh. So symmetry is something nowadays people, I don't know, they seem to uh, have forgotten about it because yeah, your computer is so powerful. Yes, your smartphone is more powerful than the computer that put Niels Armstrong on the moon. But who cares if you make use of very, um, or if you make use of any type of symmetry, you save more than with any other measure to improve your computational speed because you simply cut the number of elements by half, by three uh, quarters, whatever. Yeah, so you you can even sometimes reduce it to one eighth of your model. So think about a three-dimensional tensile test. Yeah, and so this might be the cross-sectional view is just like this, right? So think about the uh, number of symmetries. You have a symmetry here, just looking at the upper half. You have a further symmetry here. So now we're down to one quarter. But now I could also say I have a symmetry in this direction and I have a symmetry in this direction. And then uh, this volume actually comes down to, okay, no, wait, uh, this is the same symmetry axis. Ooh. Um, so we already applied this, so these are the same. Um, so we, you're down to one eighth. So this is whoop, one eighth of your total three-dimensional model. So if you only model this one eighth, you can put eight times more elements into it. So for a higher accuracy and to better model whatever you are interested in, um, than compared to the th full 3D model. So symmetry is something I put a lot of effort into to find symmetries, to understand symmetries. Um, uh, but you have to know the limits, like uh, if you have isotropic materials. Um, so, for example, yes, you can do axisymmetric um, symmetry, which is, uh, we talked about this with the uh, CAX elements. However, you have to understand that, for example, if you have a asymmetric deep drawing process, so you know that at the end your uh, final shape will have this earring type of failures. This is due to anisotropy. And if you only take uh, one cross section here, here or here as a effect of a full axisymmetric assumption, then you won't see this. You don't know. Do you, are you at, at an earring on the top or the bottom? So if you know that you have certain limitations, you cannot make use of the most symmetry that it aus that it's out there. So understand the limits of symmetry, and uh, it's really important. So uh, what n nowadays becomes more and more popular is the cyclic symmetry because nowadays you have many uh, products or whatever which are not axisymmetric but cyclically symmetric. And um, if we have time, we can oh, sorry, we can also um, take a look into uh, cyclic symmetry. All right, that was a lot we had to talk about. I hope you have an idea now about the different continuum elements, and I can say that it's probably most important thing you will use in metal forming. This is why I put a lot of. Uh, focus on this particular tutorial and uh, yeah let's see what we can do uh, in abacus using this different type of elements thanks bye bye